we go on with the next bit of creation. And that's the award, the startup award. For the last two days, entrepreneurs have been sweating hard and presenting to a very critical panel, a jury of 12 members. I'm first going to invite out the jury members, five of them, to come sit here. Please join us. Shira Abel, who is from Israel and has been working with startups for 20 years. Thank you very much. Louisa Marie Meyer, Startup Bootcamp. <laughs> Matthias Schrader, Sine Schrader, Volker Schutz Horizont, of course, the chairman of this event. And last but not least, Morten Lund, serial entrepreneur. And Morten will present with me, but first we'll give the startups a chance to tell you what they do in exactly three minutes. Okay, the first startup for you is Argus Labs. Here is co-founder Rule Beggar. Hello, hello. hello. All right, what a great conference. Thanks for having us. Um, the future of technology lies in building a better human computer interaction uh, with a little bit more intelligence behind it. So at Argus Labs, what we're doing, we're, uh, we're uh, building a cognitive computing platform which allows you to build, uh, which allows you to sense, understand, and anticipate the behavior and the mood of a mobile user. Uh, how we do this? We use all kinds of personal data, all kinds of sensor data, and we use your complete digital trail. We build behavioral profiles on top of this, and with that, we deliver you uh, a usable result that means something. We do this in a mobile SDK. That's an SDK that allows you, you can integrate into any app, and this app uh, can then use our results. Uh, an example, what we do. Emma is feeling stressed. This is something we detect. Why is this? She's in a traffic jam on her daily commute home. She has ag done some aggressive, t aggressive typing on her phone. Uh, she has had a short night of sleep, and so on. A mood radio can use this information to play a bit more relaxing music. Our mood models detect this. Uh, we have cu currently four signed customers uh, and a few hot leads. Our business model is quite simple. You pay for what you use and the amount of data you use. The focus for us for 2014 is getting a foot on the ground in the mobile advertising industry because we can do some really nice real-time precision targeting. Uh, we've won in the past some public awards. Uh, we're doing a lot of research. Research in machine learning, research in AI, research in deep learning, uh, effective computing and cognitive computing. We're working together with a lot of, uh, we're tr partnering up with a lot of universities that can support us in this. Uh, of course, there is the issue of privacy when you collect that much data about something, uh, about somebody. We take this very seriously, and privacy is very important to us. Uh, I can go on and go into detail about this, but we don't have the time for that. We're currently a team of eight people. Uh, we have been awarded one patent, and we have a few more in the pipeline. We're looking, that's why we're here, for 2.5 million euro, of which 1.3 million euro has already been committed. Uh, this will be used, of course, to get our sales and marketing team in New York, which is the heart of advertising, uh, going and continue research and development on our product. We value ourselves quite unique uh, because of we're doing human behavior data science, completely algorithm driven. So to conclude, in the future, when you see emotionally intelligent operating systems, as was shown in this, mu in this movie, this will probably, probably be running on top of our SDK. Thank you. Thank you. Um. As we said before, the best of times, the worst of times. I don't know if we all want all our emotions known to everybody. We are going straight on to the next presenter, to be honest. It's One Life, and presenting is David Schaaf, the founder and CEO. Please welcome David. I'm David, I'm the founder of OneLife.me. And I'm here to tell you that uh, how we are going to be part of the healthcare revolution that's kicking off finally this year. So, um, first off, 
patient medical records. Uh, everybody is entitled by law to receive them, but when you do, they're very static, they're paper-based, and they don't tell you very much. Uh, furthermore, um, I want to show you something. This is my own personal mother pass when my mother was pregnant with myself. She carried this around for one year. It's 34 years old, and funnily enough, this document looks very much the same today. It's handwritten. It contains some, some data that uh, the doctor has put in with his beautiful handwriting. Uh, and yeah, you can imagine the value you get out of this is almost zero. So we're here to um, basically um, make things better for the patient. This, our product, is, it's one life. It's a secure mobile health app connected to a private cloud. And uh, we're here to basically give, the, uh, give a, a tool to the patient to provide further insights into their own health and help them live a healthier life. Um, we're also about strengthening the relationship with the doctor, so um, the user can decide to share uh, information with another doctor so about test results that have been done with one doctor, share this with another doctor. And since it's a mobile experience, you can take this with you, of course. If you're in an emergency, for example, you've got all your data with you, not just yourself, also your family if you want to. Um, first off, we're going to go to market uh, with a focus on the pregnancy use case, so families specifically. You can see here some three beautiful screens of our digital mother pass. So uh, this is basically almost the same information that you have in this mother pass booklet, just visualized and curated in a way that it means something to you. So parents have a chance to understand what's going on in their pregnancy, what you've already done and what still awaits you, right? So you've got here um, ultrasounds, obviously a very emotional uh, uh, document for a becoming parent. Um, and you can go through these and actually understand what's going on, how your baby is moving along, benchmarked uh, along what's recommended against your peer group, etc. Um, we are launching this as a free um, business model. So basically, we're, um, we're coming, uh, when you download this app from the App Store, you're getting these five widgets out of the box. Um, we are developing these together with uh, the Compu Medical Group, uh, a very established and, and a well-known partner, market leader actually, for doctors' practice software. So almost all doctors in Germany are running one of their software suites, and uh, it's beautiful because we can get the data in a clean and very secure way from the doctor's practice right into our cloud without having any security issues. Furthermore, um, once you have those, uh, those apps installed, you can then uh, personalize the experience by adding further widgets. So I've just explained we're focusing on families initially, so we'll be providing these four widgets from the get-go, but in the future we'll be providing further widgets uh, for other target groups to basically expand our market and our focus to chronic patients, to people who want to live a healthier life, or people who are injured, for example. This is our team, so um, I'm in charge for product, strategy, and development. My co-founder, Marco, is in charge for user experience, and uh, we have a team of advisors. Um, Jens Dommel from, from CGM used to be at Microsoft running Health Vault in Western Europe. Uh, he's also opening doors for us to the industry and to doctors. Florian Teulich, a very experienced architect, and Benjamin Esser from Obanara Health us with funding and financing. Excellent. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, it's only 180 seconds. It is too short to really explain the company. But as you can see, the nominees for the winner are really companies that reflect some of the themes we have talked about in the last two days. Um, the next one, delighted to have here, is Cinepass, presenting by founder Richard Rubin. Hi, everyone. So, um, usually when I want to go to the movie theater, what I do is I search on Google for my hometown and my favorite movie or whatever I want to watch. And what I get is a search result, which usually gives me all the show times. But what I cannot do here is actually book a ticket, right? So what do I do next? I advance to all the different uh, cinema websites. They just get attacked by ads and just a horrible user interface. It takes a thousand clicks to actually get to my ticket. That's where I get pissed. So next, I have to go to the theater and actually wait in line again. Thank you. Exchanging my online ticket for a real ticket. That's where I get really pissed. <laughs> so that's why we created CinePass. All showtimes, all theaters, all prices, one platform. You can see some glimpses of our product right here. You can search for theaters or movies, whatever you please. And you can already book popcorn and soda online at a discounted price. If you buy this via our different payment methods, 
You get an e-ticket with which you don't have to wait in line anymore, but can walk straight to your seat. We're planning the beta launch for May, so we're pretty excited to be this close to the finish line. To take a global look, the global ticketing market for movie theaters is around 9 billion euros and 15 billion including concessions. More narrow, in Germany and the market for Cinepass would be around 170 million euros. How we make money is pretty simple. It's a commission-based model, so for every ticket or bundle we sell, we take a commission from the theater owner. Um, in terms of traction, right now we got around 40 theater owners signed up, waiting for our launch, as well as two of the bigger chains. On the other side, we're also working closely with distribution companies like Disney or Paramount, which are interested in the data we are generating because we're aggregating all that information. The team is consisting of uh, Burak, our CTO, with six years of experience as a CTO in a different startup, and Enrique and me, who worked on a startup before and know how to run a business. So the rest of the team is pretty tech heavy. We got graphic designers and coders. We got an advisory board consisting of people with knowledge in the movie industry, sales, and financial aspects. So if you want to know more, or if you're interested in investing in our seed round, please come talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the, the fourth and last uh, person to present is the company Two Go Tablets, presented by Benjamin Schwerzer. Hello. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, dear jury. My name is Benjamin from Tablet Solutions, and I'm here to introduce the next generation construction tool. As you can probably imagine, assembling machinery and plants on site is complex. And the only way to make this efficient is to have the right information. The problem with this information is it comes in thousands and thousands of documents. Plans, instructions, specifications, drawings, part lists, and so on. And it's all in paper, which means it, can, uh, it is outdated, it has no search, and most of the time the engineer does not have, even have it with him when he's on the site. So how can we solve this? We just take the whole documentation, put it on a tablet, structure it, and let people search it. According to studies, assembling preconditions can be uh, reduced uh, costs of constructions, I mean, can be reduced by improving assembly preconditions by 10 to 25 percent. And we are aiming at achieving this by introducing our to-go manager software. So how are we going to do it? First, we have our tablets. And then we have all the documents which are stored in the internal ERP system of our clients. We introduce our to-go manager software, which runs on our to-go server, pull this data, structure it, and deliver it as information packages to the individual tablets. There, they can be accessed through our to-go apps. And the best thing, we can price that as a per-user price of 40 to 90 euros. Are you still wondering what we are doing? We are the sales force for construction site engineers. And is this relevant? Yes, it is. We already have a big reference customer, which you might know from skiing, and they used our tablets to build the skiing lifts for the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. We also got a lot of media coverage, industry, magazine like, industry magazines like what we're doing, but I don't want to take all the credit. Uh, we have an outstanding team of developers and engineers that is making this possible, and uh, because of them, I'm here to tell you that this is the new normal in the construction industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we have to organize a few things. I'd like all the startups, all the presenters to come out and line up, and I'd like Morten to come stand here with me. And there's actually one thing missing, and that's a suitcase. So I'm going to ask the people behind, well, there is a suitcase coming. 
who, who've been, been, been so kind to help us all along? It will come. Yes, well, where shall you stand? Why don't you stand here, next to each other? There it is. There's the big suitcase. 10,000 euro. Morten, first, we're going to have a chat. We're not going to let you escape without first having a chat. Morten is a very well-known entrepreneur, entrepreneur. You experienced highs and lows, and you've often talked about it, but you just, you know, you invested in Skype, sold it, got lots of money, invested in a free newspaper, and managed to take the house down. Everything disappeared. Now you're investing again. You're doing a lot of work in the financial industry, I understand. Can you tell me a little bit about how you're doing these days? Well, I, is this, yeah, um, well, <clears throat> I think I was very lucky to, to lose everything because there should be a law against 27-year-old kids being really rich. <coughs> um, and, and right now I'm looking at yeah, mostly financial but also transaction-based uh, so, ser services and, and software companies. And I think, yeah, all of what we see here is, is on that verge. You take a lot of big data or play with data and then you structure it in a format, whether it's for a cinema ticket or for a, construction for a, site health, or yeah, for a health app or, or for a construction site. And, um, and I've, been, I've been super lucky to be part of a company called TradeShift, where we built the most boring and biggest company within in electronic invoicing in the world over the last five You're years. Huge in Asia, apparently, right? Yeah, in the US. And okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, how how did it happen? Did you think like I'm going to do this, or was this the asking no, for no, no. investment? No, no, no. I, I, I don't have a lot of good ideas, but there's a lot of good <laughs> ideas chasing me. That's so okay. I, I was lucky. To, I was lucky to filter one out that was not too stupid. Um, and well, then there was. What is the stupidest investment you ever made? Not the free newspaper, but something. It's, something it's, that you it's think. It's also like the coolest, actually. I invested a lot of money in a, a plant that is able, actually, that was gene modified, so it was able to detect TNT in the ground, so it could actually detect landmines and turn red. Okay. We just forgot how do you plant it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little stupid, but it was really cool. <laughs> I, I have a feeling, was, you know, we can use these mini drones and just, you know, throw out the seeds or something, yeah, but it never it, panned it, out. I think the drones, admitted, this is five years ago, so yeah. it was a little lame, but it was really cool. <laughs> and um, like everything else, it got a lot of female attention. That's good. <laughs> Um, you've been around here the last few days. Um, I have the feeling there's a good buzz going with European companies again. I mean, it always goes up and down, and everybody looks at Asia and the US, but what do you feel about Europe at the moment? I think it's really good. I think it's, it's, the problem is that any taxi driver in LA would be a better sales guy than any of these. I mean, <laughs> he'll, he'll sell oh, that goes a compliment <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> he'll sell you his manuscript and his mother's house before you leave the taxi. And I think that's our problem. We're really too bad at sales here in Europe, but it's definitely something that you can you can work on. And then I think we're we're a little better at, at doing something deep. Yeah. And, and I th I think this is I mean this is the proof. I mean, there all companies here have have done a, a deep dive into something in a, in a niche or a vertical where there's definitely a lot of money. And then the the only thing that that is hard, I think, is the mentality, especially here in Germany. I mean, it, it's weird that I'm probably one of the most uninteresting Danish people, but I mean, every time I come here, they, I mean, I, I can sell a thousand tickets for Germans who want to hear about an idiot who went bankrupt and wants to admit it. <laughs> because in, in essence, startups are... Everybody and, and likes a good story. Yeah, yeah but, 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 it, but it's also weird that, that, uh, that, uh, that this fantastic country, I mean, I, I think Germany is, is, is an amazing country in, in most senses, most of all because you can actually trust each other when you do a deal. And we forget that when we live in this part of the world, but being able to do a handshake and the deal will probably happen is really good. Yeah. But what we really forget about, uh, about startups is that, I mean, it's people fumbling around with, with an idea that is not set. And all of these companies means all of these companies will probably change at least something like 170 degrees of, of, of their idea or their focus over the next year, because otherwise they will not survive. They will see a competitor, somebody faster or better, coming from the left, More and then money. they will move and find a better angle. So, so I think. We, we just need to, to cultivate it a little more, but, but then again, we also have to be very careful 
uh, of putting this shit on 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 the on the, on the school curriculum. I, I have I see these in Denmark at least, where you have networking as a, as a class in school. That's the most stupid thing I ever saw. I mean, they should do dating first and then networking <laughs> later, maybe. But, I mean, it, it's or, so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. We also need more kids here in Europe, so dating first. <laughs> yeah. Now we have to. We're going to actually make this a contest yeah. for the best sales because we're going to let you guys decide who will win. These are all solid startups. They have, you know, the the jury has selected them as serious companies with something which that's doesn't worth. which doesn't put any guarantee of quality. <laughs> of but yeah, <laughs> the jury has. We're not saying they it. still yeah. exist yeah. next yeah. year, but yeah. you know, they're there. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to say the name of the company. So if you're the company, just take one step forward so people recognize, oh, that's that guy. And um, then you give a round of applause. And then, Martin, you have to decide. The longest applause yeah. is yeah. the company that gets the suitcase. I think the most aggressive. I, I'm not into long stuff. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'm going to. I'm so, going to. Uh, yeah, so we, but there should be some app of some uh, decibel meter or something. Okay, but, but, let, let, but let, let's try let's it out. Try, I mean, try. I, I can, all, I can, we'll, I can yeah. always decide, and I have decided. Anyway. And we have jury members here, eh? <laughs> Look, oh, jury, yeah. jury, you keep listening as well. If Martin yeah. can't make up his yeah. mind, then yeah, you think, guys will I say, what sense. was the longest? So, best so, um, so, so let's start with uh, with construction. I, I really liked it. I, I think there's um, there's a big business here, and uh, it's cool that you're alive already. I don't Thank know if you, you can, if, you can uh, if you can build your sales force because that's what we we normally see with B2B startups it's hard but there's well, a, there's a good chance so yeah. give him a, give Step him forward. some sound if you like it Thank, Thank you very habit. much <laughs> Thank you keep going <laughs> <laughs> Well <laughs> I think Thank 50, you 50. Thank you very much guessing guessing and um I'm in love with, with all kinds of uh, targeted advertising. I know it's not uh, after Snowden, it's supposed to be bad, but I, I love anything that can predict what I want. I'm sure that the father who, was, uh, who found on his, out on his daughter's computer that she was probably pregnant, he doesn't like it. Uh, but, but that's, uh, yeah, that could happen to me well, anytime as well. I think he doesn't like it. I mean, it uh, I think he didn't like right that. I don't know. No, but um, I, I really like uh, the, 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 the idea, and I think maybe you need a little bit more of a more aggressive uh, distribution model. So it should be faster to sign up with a, but I saw something with Criteo and these guys. If you can be a data, to, I mean, a technology supplier to any of these guys, it, it's an exploding market. So give the guy a hand if you Marcus like it. Labs. And if you understand it. Already, already difficult, already difficult. It's very difficult. Oh, you watch the second. Oh, you yeah, can. There's I, a clock here. He can watch the second. You watch the second. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, it was myself and, and the jury at uh, the B05 stage who, uh, who selected the, um, the, the biomedical startup with, where, where you will start with the, with the pregnancy app. And uh, I was, of course, very biased because my, uh, the mother of my children is, is a midwife and I, I'm still angry that she didn't invent this because I draw, the, I draw it drunk or high one night and the same five, five, five years ago, but she didn't act on it. I think, you're really, I think it's a really cool, cool thing and I think if you can make it, if you can make it work in terms of, of uptake, it's always hard because you... People have, especially here in Germany, there's something with this data law protection that doesn't rhyme. Something. <laughs> but um, but I, th I think it's it's really cool. So uh, yeah, give one them life, an applause guys, if, one if life. you want to believe in health. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear I, I hear more sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And then, um, then let's play with the power of bullshitting because what I really liked was your stuff. It's also, st I mean, I get so fucking aggressive every time I have to buy a ticket for the movies and they, <laughs> they end up getting me to call them and I have to stand there in line 30 minutes before, even 40 minutes before because it's 30 minutes before it runs out. And uh, I was very impressed with where you've, where you've got to until now. I think it's, 
it's really against you that you're not live. It's nearly stupid. You should have a couple of small underground cinemas live that you could show off here and book a ticket while you're in, on stage. But uh, give the man a hand if you ever go to the cinemas. <laughs> Cinepas! <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Local hero. <laughs> Yes, I think there's no way around it. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> Good work. Really cool. Really cool. Congratulations. Congratulations to our entrepreneurs. Yeah. Thank you, jury. Thank you, entrepreneurs. And thank you, Morten. Thank you very so much. You're welcome. Take care. And I'm asking my co-moderator to come on stage to announce and introduce our last speaker, our last keynote speaker that I know many of you in this audience are very interested to hear from. And I look aside to see where Jochen Wegner is. Ah, okay, I've got my cue. S apologies. There's a special announcement, and it's really important for all our startups. The special announcement will be made by Isidro Lazo Ballesteros, who's leading Starter Europe, a European Commission initiative. My mistake. Apologies. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and tell us. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation to the organizers of this wonderful event here next. I'm going to speak to you about what we are doing in Brussels, about the startups. Something maybe you were not expecting, anything happening in Brussels uh, related to startups. But we have launched an initiative called Startup Europe with, the, with, the, with several uh, um, components within the initiative. Going from funding, there is 80, uh, sorry, 850 million euros for the startups and SMEs there in the Horizon 2020 and in the COSME program for 2014. Part of the money is for the ecosystem builders of startups ecosystems. Part of the money is directed to startups. We are also doing things in um, getting evidences about how the app economy and the startups are important for growth and jobs in Europe. We found recently through a GIGAOM Pro study that we funded that there is a workforce in the app economy in Europe of 1.8 million uh, people in Europe and going to grow in five years to 4.8 million uh, members of the workforce. No other sector in the economy in Europe has this potential for growth. And even more, this is very competitive. The results of this study, called Europe, you can go to the Europe.eu to go to see it, shows that the uh, app developers in Europe are competitive. They are getting 42% of the revenues of the app economy in the world, as much as the states are taking. So it's not only a, an area where a lot of jobs is created, but it's also an area that is competitive. So we are pushing for this. We support this area and the different uh, institutions. We will get, a, 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 as, as this is a competitive sector, the money that will go into this sector will go also to the, to the app developers in Europe. And the impact also in growth. Currently, 17.5 billion euros in revenues, going to grow in, th in five years to 63 billion euros. So there's now evidences to justify concrete public, uh, public policies in Europe to do that. This is one of the things we do. The other things, as I said, was funding. A lot of money is, is there, available for the startups. Again, I think ne never public funding should be the, the final purpose of the startups because this is, goes against the real entrepreneurs, let's say. But of course, there are some money there, essentially for the early stage uh, startups, because not all across Europe, the, the youngsters are so lucky, maybe like in Berlin, to have this flourishing ecosystem that you have here. So Europe is diverse, so we have to be, uh, take that into account. We are also doing a lot of networking. We realize that in Europe has a lot of strengths, have a lot of startups, a lot of accelerators, a lot of investors all across Europe that they have never met one, or they have never met one another. For example, accelerators 
until we have a meeting with all the acceptors in Europe together, they have never met in a cross room. They are all in Next Berlin, in the web, in the Next Web, in the, uh, in the, the summit in Dublin, but they have never met in a round table to discuss the problems. So we have created a fora of accelerators, another fora of co-working spaces, another fora of investors who are interested in investing in web and mobile uh, startups, another fora of uh, crowdfunding platforms across Europe. So we are creating all these kind of uh, opportunities for the stakeholders in Europe to connect one another. And then, the fourth thing we are doing is helping startups to scale up. And how we are doing that, we, are, we have created a platform, a matching platform between corporates and startups. Governments in Europe don't have money to help startups to scale up. There are not enough investors as we would like to have in Europe investing directly in startups in the scaling up phase, but we have corporates big corporates in Europe with a lot of money, and they, this could be a win-win situation for the corporates and the startups working together. So there, in this platform, there are already uh, a lot of corporates that have signed up to this, like uh, uh, banks, like BBVA, uh, utilities like Enel, uh, telecos like uh, Telefonica and Orange. We are in discussions with insurance companies like Allianz and others coming for this scaling up uh, area. And then, the, the fifth pillar that we do in the Startup Europe is celebrate, celebration, recognition. We want, the problem we want to solve here is that we don't celebrate enough the interpreters we have here. We have a kind of cultural problem here related to, to risk aversion, to, 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 to being af afraid of, of, of failing in this, in this area. So we want, we, the first thing we did, we created what we call the Leaders Club. And we brought, the, we brought there the, the people from the Daniel Egg, the founder of Spotify, to the founder of uh, uh, Robio, Angry Bears, to, the, to Niklas Thestrom, to Resma Sohoni, to Boris, the founder of Dennis Web, to uh, Daniel Sand, uh, the, the founder of, of uh, 20. We brought all of them, uh, the Lars Hinrich from here, from Half Forward. The, all half of work. This is the first thing we did. They created a manifesto that has been signed up by thousands of 7,000 people all across Europe. And we are continuing doing more things. The things that we are presenting here today are these three things in the area of, of, of uh, um, celebration. One is take all the starts, another is the dynamic mapping of the ecosystem, and finally is the Euro pioneers. If we move always with the idea of this of encouraging people to be aware that in Europe you have a lot of support behind you, you are not alone, you should not be afraid to take risk and fail and get a, a, a game back to try again. So here we have the dynamic, the first of these initiatives is the dynamic mapping. We got inspired by the map in Cambridge in which you can uh, uh, zoom in and go and see the startups, where are they physically located, that you can click in one, on, in one of them, you can see who has invested in these startups, that you can see relationships via LinkedIn and Crunchbase about how the, 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 the investors in the different startups are uh, uh, um, interlinked. You can see also the growth, the revenues, the jobs created by the different startups. This is the, the map that you can see here on my back right and uh, uh, also this map about the uh, private equity map in which you can see in a geographical area how much uh, equity is collected. The partners we had selected to do this work are Grant Thornton, you might know them because it's a, it's a worldwide company, a trampoline. Trampoline is the one who has done this, the system in, in, in Cambridge, so they have all the expertise to do it. We are planning to start by mapping 20 local hubs in Europe. I cannot promise Berlin will be one of them, but. I could imagine that when they had to choose one from, from Germany, they would have to choose between Berlin and Munich. There are only 20 all across Europe, so we don't have even in, enough one local ecosystem per country, but maybe Berlin will be one of them. The other initiative is the Tech All Starts. We had the support of uh, a startup book can to do that. And uh, as you see, uh, uh, Luisa, is the, the person from Startup book, uh, book and that is helping us. And here we can see uh, well, this, this uh, competition is targeted to the early stage startups, those who are registered in the EU, less than three years and less than one million of funding. And you can see here the, the experience, the feedback from the winner of 2013. He got more than 10,000 Twitter mentions, more than 200 investment interests, 
more than 200,000 websites visits only in the first week, coverage on more than 50 sites, and they close a sit round very few days after the takeover starts. And I have to tell that uh, uh, the name of this company is Trusted, and when I meet him, he's, I mean, he's the best promoter we have of takeover stars, and Luisa can confirm that. The, we will select 12 uh, young startups. We they will go through a, a series of training activities, and the, the, the finalists will go to the Founders Forum in London. And then they will get the, 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 the winner will be there, and will be awarded the, 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 the award by Nelly Cruz, the Vice President of the, the European Commission. And finally, this is not for this, this is the European Pioneers, it's not for the early stage, it's for the consolidated founders. Here we are, not, we are not looking for a startup, we are looking for a founder, maybe a serial entrepreneur who has been funding several, uh, uh, start, who have been launching several startups. So we have the uh, four categories, Web Entrepreneur of the Year Award is the main category, and here the, the winner last year were Alex and Eric, the founders of SoundCloud, then we have the Young Web Entrepreneur of the Year Award. The winner here was the founder of Swift Key. Then we, got, we had the Gazelle Awards, those who have been able to grow very much during this year, during 2014. And finally, we have the Female Web Entrepreneurs of the Year Award. And here I make a special appeal to the women here to spread the word about this category so that we get a lot of candidates here. In the uh, Take All Stars uh, uh, previous um, a slide that I presented, there are already 200 candidates for the early stage, and we are getting candidates almost, or more than one every day. The closing session for the Tecos Stars is in two, two weeks, 21st of May. This one, European S, starts, is launching here today. So today you can start with the nominating people, yourself or someone else. There will be later a public voting, and then uh, in the web summit, most likely the winners will be uh, selected and announced there. So this is all I, we wanted to say from the, from the commission. Please follow up in the, in the, uh, in the Twitter, Startup EU, or in the Facebook group uh, that you have there. And you have all the information there, all the information of funding, the different networks I have mentioned, the group of corporates. So everything is there for you to look there and see what is of your interest. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.